Wendy Erickson with Women in Drones, podcast host and digital media for the Women in Drones organization. And I am joined by Kimberly Penn, who is chief strategist with Women in Drones. Welcome aboard. We're so excited to have you, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here and good afternoon to you. Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What is your background? Absolutely. Um, I come from a tech background uh, originally, um, opened the first woman-owned tech firm uh, in Texas about uh, 28 years ago and uh, opened some other companies as well. So I've got a, an entrepreneurial spirit and about five years ago entered the drone industry, um, focusing on uh, risk mitigation and strategies. And that had led me over to women in drones, I'm looking for a, a place to network and connect with other women in the drone industry and had the pleasure of meeting our CEO, Sharon Rossmark. And uh, we quickly started working on some initiatives and, and here I am, I'm glad and very excited uh, for this appointment. Well, we are excited to have you to take us to new heights. That's something that we like to say. What attracted you to the drone industry? Yes. Um, about five years ago, as I mentioned um, previously, um, I noticed that drones were uh, kind of flying around. I'm fortunate to live on a golf course. And so I've always wanted to just kind of fly one on a golf course, but uh, you're really not supposed to do that. And so <laughs> I started really researching the drone industry and decided to enter using some of the skill sets that I had already um, you know, gained a, a very solid reputation in um, as an auditor, um, and so found this opportunity to, to not necessarily be a drone operator, but to work with drone operators, small businesses and corporations and help them mitigate the challenges that having a drone um, can bring into your business model. What role will you play in implementing women in drones strategy moving forward? Yes, my goal and my role is to connect the dots. And so as we work with our membership, um, corporate partners and, and other uh, organizations that are looking to engage with women in drones that I hope you know, really flush out the opportunities in such a streamlined way so that we can be um, the premier uh, organization for those who want to work or connect with drones operators and UAS and, and that aspect. And so just really building out the actionable steps to, to go to our next level of growth and beyond. You mentioned uh, our founder, Sharon Rossmark, yeah. and um, she and, and I met in a drone, uh, I guess you would have called it a conference, um, yeah. where we were very few women and, and a lot of men. And we've, we've talked a lot about the fact that what we do know about um, any tech industry, there are aren't enough women in it. And the drone industry is, is a, along the same lines. We know that only 7% of the FAA uh, certified remote pilots in the United States, only 7% are women. Um, and I know you know a lot about that uh, as well, um, working in um, the tech industry. So, so what does a, an organization like Women in Drones uh, do uh, for that kind of an atmosphere and what as a strategist what are you trying to um, build upon? Yes absolutely uh, we want to learn from the challenges that the uh, tech world had. Um, I entered into the tech world in, in the late 80s early 90s um, about 99 percent um, male and in that um, industry and, and that included all the subsets of that and so we're looking to take and learn and scale very quickly um, in, the, in this side of aviation by learning from, again, what the tech world did right and some of the challenges that they had and, and just really build and foster in an environment in women and drones where we can create a pipeline, support the existing um, members. Uh, we're very fortunate to have about a 70-30 a split in terms of women in, as members and about 30% men. And so as we look to just really create not just a safe place, but we really look to create a brave space for our membership to network, connect, and to build accordingly. I love that, a brave space. Thank you. It takes some bravery, right? Yes, um, so we have a number of initiatives 
yeah. in the works uh, with Women in Drones. One of those was just announced. Uh, Women in Drones Africa, our very first international chapter. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, we're very excited. Welcome Women in Drones Africa um, chapter. And when we say chapter, it really is um, more than that, but that's the best word um, yeah. that we can use at this time. So we launched officially today. Um, we've got a great uh, lead um, that's working very hard and has been doing a lot of work. I won't say behind the scenes because that's not the goal here. Um, we have 22 countries, excuse me, coming online in the continent of Africa. And we feel very confident with, with the right type of work, leadership and networking that we'll be able to at some point say that we have at least one member of Women in Drones in every country in the continent of Africa. That is so exciting. And we should give some um, kudos to Louise Jupp in, yeah. in Africa, who is, is yes, heading, heading that up. And she's going to be uh, finding ways uh, for women there to, to network and, and telling their stories. Correct. One of the ways that we've already come up with and Louise has taken the lead uh, with some of our new members, for example, is here in the US, we have a, a coffee uh, chat kind of networking event and some uh, learning opportunities. We, because of the time difference um, among the continent, we're gonna have a fireside chat version of that. And so that'll allow all of our members to um, join those type of opportunities. And that way our membership across the world can connect as well as welcome our new members um, in the African chapter. Yes, being a global organization uh, does get a little bit uh, uh, tricky with all the different time zones. So yeah, this absolutely. is a wonderful way to uh, have our uh, friends in Africa uh, participate. Yes. But we're all one big organization. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the, the collaborations and the importance of that word when it comes to an organization trying to do what Women in Drones is trying to do, collaborations. Tell me about yes. that. Yes, yes, yes. You know, collaborate is, is such a popular word. I know last year it gained even more traction due to the pandemic and the necessity to work uh, remotely or in, in silos that looked very different from you know the years prior to that. And so as we create this again, brave space for our members to thrive and to get the educational and networking resources that they may need and more because we're also looking for you know feedback from our membership, which can be anything from individuals. Mm -hmm. um, our membership levels include uh, students, uh, small businesses, nonprofits, and of course, um, our anchors, which are often our corporate partners or members. And so we want to continue to get these folks together so that they can uh, work together to bid on RFPs, for example, support each other um, and understand that although we are a global organization, um, we hope to be in every city and certainly know that with the use of technology, we can keep people connected in a much different way. And I think people have a greater appreciation of that, particularly in the midst of this pandemic. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit more about the value of, of being a member yes. um, of Women in Drones and, and the resources that yes. are available to Absolutely. members and from members. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of those, a lot of the benefit is, is the networking side of it. So Absolutely. Yeah. So the networking part of, again is, is such a critical piece, but we have a number of resources. We are, are working on uh, programs, including if you're interested in joining the drone industry, where do you start? Um, I have a role as an entrepreneur in residence with the, at the community college um, in Houston, Texas, which is where I'm based. But again, since we're virtual, I'm, I can be anywhere at any time. We'll be pulling in the type of resources to help people move from um, a micro drone operator or micro business to a small business or small to medium, helping them connect with uh, corporate opportunities. We have a career center so that people can connect in that capacity as well, including getting the type of resources and support to update the resume and be prepared to uh, participate in um, you know, interviews and, and also speaking engagement pieces. Um, we do have a speaking engagement panel. Uh, we're very fortunate with this reputation that um, our membership as well as our CEO has, has built where organizations reach out to women in drones and say, we need speakers uh, for different conferences. And so as a member, um, you could give us that information. We have 
uh, members that have uh, books for their published authors. And um, we would just really listen to the membership as I stated to send out what it is that they need. But the value is, um, again, this brave space where you can come and learn and you can also contribute. That is so exciting. Thank you. But yes, it, it is very exciting building this. It was a very small community, and but we're growing. Yes. The community. Right. And uh, you, you mentioned uh, that we are in, in, in the pandemic. And um, it, it just occurs to me how every day I read a new story about how drones um, and the whole um, unmanned aviation contactless delivery, the value that, that people are seeing in that because we are in this pandemic. So opportunity is presenting itself. Right. So um, that is, 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 is exciting. Uh, yes. The silver lining maybe in, in yes. all of this. So yes. this would be a case where somebody could have an idea about yes. how a drone could be used in, in these conditions and, and women in drones would be a great place to uh, bring that idea. Yes, we're looking to help them again, work out from a business plan. Of course, they'll have the uh, mitigation piece so we can work out any challenges, which every business plan should have, you know, disaster preparedness recovery, how you may need to prepare for, um, you know, 107 in terms of the testing piece. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, as an asset, I've brought 36 companies to VC funding and acquisition. And so that's a great resource. And we have people that will be pulling in to talk and to teach what do you need to do from the start to build out. And, and we're looking to um, help our members become part of the testing for Amazons and Walmarts and those type of organizations that are using, um, or at least doing the testing as it relates to, you know, contactless delivery at this point. And so we wanna be ahead of that and help our organization really grow so that we can create those opportunities. We're not gonna go back to uh, where we were a year ago. We're in a new future. Some things will become um, much more familiar to us and we'll have some aspect of things that we may have enjoyed, but we've got a bold new future and, and Women in Drones is embracing that. And yes, and we hope that more women are part of that uh, yeah. drone industry future. Absolutely. I think we're on our way. So Kimberly Penn, Chief yes. Strategist, thank you so much you. for chatting with me today. I know we're going to be seeing more of you and be hearing more from you. Great ideas on collaborations and, and how we can grow the Women in Drones community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. To you.